Yo, we're gonna be breaking down how the Slaughterhouse song was made. Let's go. The song that Slaughterhouse uses is Crimes Lost, but it's an x ray remix. It's cut to as little as like half the song itself. This was made around two to three years ago, and it was for Slaughterhouse itself. So the first part of Slaughterhouse uses a sample from Vince Staples' Fire. You're looking for something that has no drums. And it's around 135. Next, we're going to be looking at the waveform, seeing what matches, seeing what doesn't. This is pitched down a lot. So it seems it's around seven semitones, so it's going to sound like this. First thing what we're adding to this is a parametric EQ, just cutting stuff out. And we're also adding a reverb tail. What reverb is, is just like the sound of space. Just imagine space and imagine what it sounds like there. It's like that bathroom in a party type sound. It sounds like that basically. But we're going to put it to the end so we can transition into the song that we're about to do now. So it's not reverb beat at this part, but at the end, it just has a nice release from the sample itself. But as you can hear in the original version, it has a little fade in. So we're going to add that real quick. Right click, create automation clip. And then you have this. That's where it starts here. I'd say around here it ends. Press shift and alt just to move it around and it doesn't change the volume itself. Because if I go up and down, it changes the volume. It's around this part here. And that's the intro for you guys. Next up, we're going to be talking about the track itself. This is in uh, 120 BPM. If we went to the original song itself, now we're going to see if it's actually 120 BPM. So we're going to add the metronome here and see if it's just on beat. It seems like it matches perfectly with the metronome itself, so it is 120 BPM. Okay, next we're going to go to the arrangement and we're going to break down the lead synth. And this is what it sounds like here. And thank you to Parabolic Sounds. I'll link everything to do with him in the description since I know nothing about sound design. We're just going to be programming this in Serum. Firstly, we're going to be going to the oscillators here. I'm just going to be leaving this to its default section at the moment. I'm going to put the unison to about 8. Then we're going to put the G tune to around like 50. That's it for the first oscillator. Now, for the oscillator B, we're going to put the octave up here to 1. And you're going to put the unison to 6. And the D tune is around like 35 to like 40. The voicing over here is going to be mono. This is what it sounds like so far. And then we're going to go to effects. Alright, we're adding some distortion. We're going to put it to diode 1. We want post distortion for this. Put the frequency to about 311 over here. And put it to a high pass filter. And then put this to its lowest it can go. So it's like a little, just a smooth curve here. Then we're going to put the drive all the way up. Not sounding like how we want it to. So we're going to add a phaser here. Put the rate all the way down. Put the frequency to about 220, 222, 224. It doesn't matter. Put the mix to around like 57. Right, next we're going to add some EQ over here. We're going to put this to peak. Add like 10 decibels of gain. And then we're going to leave it on shelf here. This is shelf. This is peak. This is low pass filter. Leave it on shelf. Put the gain to minus 10. We're going to put the frequency to about like 1300. It's going to sound like this after these two effects have been added on. Still not what we want just yet. We're gonna add some reverb, as I said, sound of space. Leave everything, just put the general mix to around like 46%, 45%. Finally, we're gonna be adding a compressor just to top it all up. Put the threshold to around 22, 21. Put the ratio to around 6 to 1. The attack all the way down, the release up. Put the gain to around 5 decibels. And there you have it, and then it sounds like this. What I forgot to mention here, it sounds like it's a bit higher. So what we're going to do with, with our preset here, we're going to be putting the oscillator B 50 cents up here on the fine. And this is going to sound like this now. As compared to without it. It sounds a bit different. You really need to listen. And lastly, we're going to put Porter to always. And we're going to put it to around 16 milliseconds. If I put it to the highest range of Porter, you'll hear what it does. Effects wise, we're going to be adding effect tricks, one for starters. Just going to put the stutter on here. And what this does, it just adds volume automation to make the sound go up and down. If you hear in the original song, like this, you can just hear subtle volume ducking and automation here. So we're just going to add that stutter through effect tricks. It's such a subtle preset, but it adds a lot to the song itself. Next, we've got RC20 Retro Cargo. And then finally, we've got some EQ. As compared to with that. That's our lead itself then. Okay, next up, we've got the bass. Firstly, we're going to go to the oscillator, leave it to around minus three oc octaves. This just makes the sound low and everything. Put the unison up to eight. Sounds like this in effect. That's it for oscillator wise. We're going to be putting some portal on it as well. Just like one millisecond. Then we're going to be putting some effects. We're going to be putting some EQ here. And we're just going to be putting the gain from this shelf over here to around just minus two. 
minus two and a half. So this is what the bass sounds like now. Effects wise, we're going to be some Prince and Pro Q3. Just cut out the low end a little bit. Not to the point where you can't hear the bass, but to the point where all the muddiness from the bass that it creates in the sound is not there. Next, we've got Ozone 10. We're going to be adding a few effects on here. And this is a stereo imager. We're going to be putting specific frequencies to mono and stereo. So from 0 to 150, we're going to be putting it completely mono. And then from 150 to 300, we're going to put it almost mono, but not completely. And then as we go up the frequency scale, we're putting less and less. This is because of the mixing and how it sounds from like speaker systems and sub speaker systems. The headphones you're listening to this song on now will not be the same as if you had it on a speaker or not. <coughs> Next, even though we already have distortion, we're going to add a bit, be adding a little bit of distortion here with Ozone Exciter. And then finally, we're going to put some EQ on it. So this is with this is without next we've got the hi-hats here i've actually added two hi-hats so the first hi-hat sounds like this and the second hi-hat sounds like this and together they just sound like this and what we're doing here is we're playing a one-step pattern in most hip-hop songs and in most songs it's normally a two-step pattern where it's just going like this but because this is witch house production it's going to be one step hi-hats and in the second half of the song here, it's going to be switching up to this. This is a half step hi-hat pattern. So that's just to add like the fast tension of the song. For effects wise, we're going to be adding some reverb onto it. More reverb from Mahalo Vintage Verb. Putting a bit of chorus on it, and then that's it. We're panning it a bit to the right as well. So the sounds we have now all sound like this. For the kick, we're just playing this pattern here. And in the second half of the song, we're playing this pattern here. Makes it a really airy kick, but a punchy kick as well. Effects wise, we're going to be adding parametric EQ just to add that high end up, which makes that airy feeling. More EQ at the bottom here and some reverb, surprisingly. Without the reverb, it sounds like this. And with it on, it sounds like this. And we're actually going to be side chaining it to the bass here. And what side chaining is, we don't want two of these kicks, like because they both dominate the lower frequencies over here. We don't want them to be clashing. So what's more important, the kick. So we're going to be lowering the volume of the bass every time the kick is played. So we're going to be doing this by going here, future parrot here. I didn't really explain side chaining correctly in my original recording, so I'm going to just show you how to do that now. So we go to the kick, and then we right click this thing here, side chain to this track, and then we open fruity limiter at the bottom here. There are other ways to side chain, but this is the easiest way to do it you go to the comp section here right click side chain put your kicks or your channel whatever your channel name is that you routed it from and this is what it sounds like without the side chaining they're just fighting over frequencies that one used to occupy more than the other so we're going to be reducing the bass that's why we put it on this track so let's make it this like minus 12. this is how low the bass is going to go in volume when the kick hits the d i'd say just 12 and the ratio just put it to around like a 3.3 to 1. You see this now? This is where the kick is hitting. That's side chaining 101. Next up, we have the snare. And this took me a long time. And we're going to be adding two snares to each other. So the first snare is actually used in a lot of Logic songs. As soon as I heard the Skulter House song play, I immediately thought it sounded similar to the Logic songs that I heard. So it sounds like this. I didn't feel like it punched enough with the snare itself. So I added another snare, which is the BWV Wave 4 snare, 36. And we're going to be putting it down two semitones. It's going to sound like this. And both of them together sound like this. And it comes in at the second part of the song over here. And that's the drums itself. Next, we got some sound effects that come up when the Slaughterhouse song drops. So we got this one here, the second one here, and then a riser coming up to the, get to the drop. Next, the intro is one part that I'd like to mention. The intro in the original song has a little bit of automation, but in this remix, it has a lot of automation, like a lot, as you can see here. We've got a lot of filters here, which varies in volume and the frequency it's at. For the main one, adding Filter Freak here, we'll be using a low pass filter and just automating that. On the hats, we're actually using Fruity Love filter. Next, we've got the bass as well, and this is a little bit different. We're actually going to be using a band pass filter. If I go 
into the song a little bit. It's, it's mostly mid-ranged filter. It's not biased towards the high end or the low end. It's think triangle when you hear band pass filter. Altogether, it sounds like this with volume automation as well as filter automation. Now for the end part, Future Pirate here again, I did explain the end wrong in my original recording. I'm just going to redo it now. What we have here is we got a different lead. I thought it kept on with the high lead here. But that's not the case. If you actually listen closely to the end of the song, it actually has a lower octave, which is what I'm going to put in now. I just duplicated the VST and put an octave lower with the same notes. And it sounds like this. We're actually going to be automating the volume as well. So we go over here, go to the start of the end part here, do a fade out, and then that's it. So then you have this. And this is only because the vocals take over from the original song, and because we can't do vocals, we're just breaking down the instrumental in this video. Only the true artists can tell us what they did and didn't do. Okay, same with the lead, the hi-hats also go down here. We have a little stutter in the beat here. I originally thought it was a tempo drop, but it was just a stutter, so everything just plays once again. And next we've got a few gross beat presets. With gross beat, we could just tweak the playback of the song. So the first preset goes like this. And this is a little stutter sound effect. The second preset goes like this. And yeah, they're just automating around the parts where they play. Yeah, that's the ending. As for the master here, which is what effects we want that include the whole track, we want a lot of bass. As you can see, this is like 4.4 decibels that we're adding up to the bass, which is a lot in sound. And then we're going to be adding a soft clipper here. So uh, yeah, that's it.